Before I start this video, a big thank you to everyone who has been part of the Study with Sudhir journey. It was on the 1st of October 2019 that my daughter Tejaswini and I started Study with Sudhir and it gives us great pleasure to see that the family has grown to a size of 1,49,000 subscribers. There's obviously a long way to go and I do hope and pray that Study with Sudhir will be able to achieve what it set out to do, which is to provide quality digital education, learning and support to students as well as teachers in both India as well as Bharat, right? And I say that with the reason because I really look to reaching out to both students and teachers in urban as well as rural India, in metro India as well as in non-metro India, the cities and the towns. So thank you very much once again. I no longer ask anyone to subscribe, but it would really help if you could spread the word, if you think, if you think, provided you think this particular channel has been of any use to you. Tell your juniors, tell your classmates, tell your seniors, tell your teachers, both from ICSC, ISC, CBSE, as well as the Telangana Intermediate State Board. All the content is there on Study with Sudhi. Now, uh, now as expected, more of India has decided to open up as part of the Unlock 5 guidelines which are put out by the Union Government. Now, these include cinema theatres, multiplexes, swimming pools, entertainment parks, etc. But it, when it comes to schools, colleges and coaching institutions, the centre has decided not to take the final call and thankfully so. What it has done is that it has instead asked the state governments and the union territories to take the decision after the 15th of October in a graded manner. And here too, it will not be the state government which will be taking the final call on all by itself. It will not be taking a unilateral decision. The schools will need to be consulted and their assessment in consultation with the parents will need to be factored before a final call is actually taken. And I do hope that it actually pans out that way in reality as well. Because it's quite possible and I do know it from testimonials from some of the students that there are some schools which are trying to do some kind of dadagiri insisting, insisting that in the final week of October the examinations will be held in an offline mode that is physical examinations and they have been insisting that students must come to schools even if their parents are not willing to send them. So if that is the case, please write into Study with Sudhir to let us know what is really the situation in your school in any part of the country. Because frankly, there cannot be any compromise with the health and safety of any student, teaching staff or non-teaching staff, right? And I'm sure all of us agree on that. Now, the points that have been mentioned in the Unlock 5 guidelines have a significant bearing on students and in the next four months especially before the final examinations are conducted and you need to listen to this carefully. Point number one, it has been made very clear that online teaching will be the preferred mode of teaching and that shall be encouraged, uh, which is probably why you have the ICSC Council also starting its own YouTube channel, putting out video content on it, because the realization has dawned that many schools, especially in the back of beyond, in the countryside, do not have the resources to do quality online teaching. So there needs to be support both for students as well as the teaching faculty. Also, let me tell you because I do find a few uncharitable comments written by some students about the quality of online teaching at their school. Let me tell you that you need to be conscious of and you are all you know, going to be voting citizens in a couple of years from now. So you need to be aware that there are lots and lots of teachers, hundreds and thousands of teachers who have actually lost their jobs in the last six months of the pandemic. So it's not a good situation financially for many of them. Even the ones who are still able to retain their jobs are actually working with 40%, 50% of their actual salary and struggling at the same time to shift to online way of teaching especially when they do not have the right appropriate technological aids to support this kind of digital education. So more empathy and more support from both students and parents would actually be the way forward, would actually be welcome instead of ridiculing any of these teachers, right? Now, point number two, it has also been made very clear that no student shall be compelled to come to school by the management even after 15th of October, if students prefer online classes, they must be allowed to continue with the same arrangement, right? 
This is important because in the second half of October and going into November, uh, the country will essentially be getting into festival mode. You will have Dashera, you will have Diwali and they will also be obviously uh, leading to more public contact. The Bihar elections and by elections in several states are also scheduled for the last week of October and the first 10 days of November. So this is bound to lead to a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases, like it or not, that's bound to happen. So it will be advisable that students in their own interest stay indoors as much as possible and stay safe. That is of paramount importance. You wouldn't want to kind of get infected and then lie down in bed wasting several days in the bargain. Like in Unlock 4, students can attend school for the purpose of clearing doubts only with the written consent of their parents or guardians. And schools, as I said, should not enforce attendance. Students need to come only if their parents are willing. And this is important, as I said, because of what some schools are planning to do in the month of October, the later half of October. And yes, no school can obviously open without conforming to and following the SOPs, the standard operating procedures which are issued by the education departments. Now, as far as colleges are concerned, the centre will take a call in consultation with the union home ministry. Till then, just like for schools, online learning will be the preferred mode of teaching and that also shall be encouraged. Now, what do students class 9, 10, 11 and 12 need to under, do and understand this because 2020 is obviously the kind of year none of us have ever seen before, right? The syllabus has been reduced, some by 20%, 25%, 30% and now the effort is to ensure there is some kind of a level playing field. Point number one, which I want all student subscribers of Study Visudhi to bear in mind, find the best online resources for different subjects and focus on what you need to do irrespective of which class you are in. Point number two, you cannot afford to be careless about your health and about your safety because you wouldn't want your study schedule, your academic calendar to go for a toss, right? And I'm sure all of you are responsible enough to understand this. Do not think that the final examinations will be postponed by a lot of days, right? As of now, the CBSE has already said with effect from 15th of February. And I would assume once CBSE says that, a lot of things actually revolve around what the CBSE says and decides, right? And also, if you look at the Supreme Court judgments on exams, be it JE, be it NEET, be it UPSC, the Supreme Court has been against the postponement of the exams provided the board say they are in a position to conduct the examinations, right? So do not kind of get swayed and carried away by what XYZ says that we will go to court and this may happen, exams will be postponed. As of now, as of today, the 1st of October 2020, think that your exams could happen anytime after the 15th of February. That should be your target. If it gets postponed by a week, two weeks, well and good, you get that extra buffer time. But as far as you are concerned, that has to be your deadline, right? Uh, yes, uh, if anyone is cribbing and complaining about how the situation is, I do get a lot of comments like that. All I would say is think for a moment about the hundreds and thousands of children in rural India of the same age as all of you who have simply dropped out of school this particular year because the schools in their village cannot afford online teaching online learning. Their homes do not have television sets to watch classes on Doordarshan and they have been asked was to work in the fields, right? Uh, many of you who are actually watching this video are very, very privileged. You are very, very lucky. You are very, very fortunate. So all I would say is look at the glass half full, not half empty, right? Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Stay safe and stay happy.